Greetings, people of God. This week, we celebrate the heritage of Asian and Pacific Islanders, from Filipinos who fled the Spanish ships in the mid-1700s to the various Asians, Hawaiians, and Pacific Islanders who were in the islands of Hawaii when it was annexed by the USA. The subsequent coming of Chinese, Koreans, Vietnamese, Thai, and other Asian nationalities, and the thousands or even millions of new generations who were born, who arrived, and are currently living in this country. Asians and Pacific Islanders are an important part of the tapestry of American society and our church community. The book of Revelation shares a vision where every tongue, every tribe, and every nation comes together before the throne of God. St. Paul also reminds us that there is neither Jew nor Gentile in the family of God. The journey to Shalom is fraught with challenges, conflict, and even violence. But these also provide us with opportunities for living out the gospel of Jesus Christ and its impact on ourselves, our diverse neighbors, the churches that we live in and part of, the powers that be, and the broader society. I invite you to join us as we come together, reflect, and worship God as we celebrate Asians and Pacific Islanders. Music will be led by Pastor Nitos Dobles and his family. Pastor Nitos is from the Philippines and he's currently pursuing his Doctor of Ministry degree at United Theological Seminary in Dayton, Ohio. He and his wife, and well, their family really, started a congregation serving Filipino Americans in the greater Dayton area. God, who is a father to the fatherless, a mother to the motherless, and a friend to the friendless, we come seeking fellowship with your power and presence. In a culture filled with divisiveness, disconnectedness, and domination, we pause for a moment of centered cosmic Christian connection that will bring wholeness and healing 
to ourselves and our world. We take time right now to worship you, to adore you, to magnify you, and to praise your holy name. In the words of the psalmist, we we'll lift up our eyes upon the hills. From hand comes our help. Our help comes from the Lord. O oh God, liberate us from the domination of individual and institutional violence. Liberate us for the ministry of deliverance to the captives within and without. Liberate us from a self-centered spiritual materialism and liberate us to serve the present age. Liberate us from building our kingdoms and liberate us for the kingdom of God. Now God, we thank you for your liberating love which redeems us, restores us, and revives and resurrects us. We thank you for the gift of love you gave us in Jesus Christ. We thank you that is because of your divine liberating love that we are able to serve, to stand and have this moment of prayer strengthened for the journey of the day. Amen. Our scripture today is from Luke chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. At that time, some Pharisees said to him, Get away from here if you want to live. Herod Antipas wants to kill you. Jesus replied, Go tell that fox that I will keep on casting out demons and healing people today and tomorrow. And the third day, I will accomplish my purpose. Yes, today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must proceed on my way. For it wouldn't do for a prophet of God to be killed except in Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers. How often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings. But you wouldn't let me. And now, look, your house is abandoned, and you will never see me again until you say, Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Our meditation for today will be shared by the Reverend John Oda, who is an ordained elder in the United Methodist Church. He is also the director of the Asian American Language Ministry Plan, one of the six ethnic plans in the United Methodist Church, and it is housed at General Board of Global Ministries. Reverend Oda is a third-generation Japanese-American. His grandparents immigrated to the United States from Japan in the 1920s. During World War II, all of Reverend Oda's relatives were illegally incarcerated by the U.S. government in concentration camps simply because of their ethnic heritage. This racist experience continues to inspire Reverend Oda to strive for justice and equality for all communities that might not have a voice or an advocate at the table. Good morning, everyone. It is great to be here with you all to celebrate Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And I first wanna thank Mighty for inviting me to, to preach this morning. Uh, a little bit about me, my name is John Oda. I direct the Asian American Language Ministry Plan of the United Methodist Church. It's housed at the General Board of Global Ministries in Atlanta, uh, funded by the General Conference. And uh, we're one of six ethnic plans in the United Methodist Church. Um, AALM itself works with uh, 12 different, what we call sub-ethnic Asian caucuses in the, in the church. And I'm not gonna name all of them, but there are three three emerging groups um, that we are starting to work with. The Karini, the Nepalese, and the Mongolian uh, fellowships we're hoping to start supporting. Uh, lastly, I'll say that I'm an ordained elder in the Cal Nevada Annual Conference. 
So it's great to be with you all. Let's, uh, let's open with a word of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for gathering us in this beautiful Sunday morning, and we ask that you be with us and help us to listen and open our hearts and to nudge us and to guide us and to lead us and even to challenge us uh, in our ministries, in our walk with you. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, let's 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 dive right into the uh, scripture passage. <clears throat> so this passage um, is, is really weird. It's really weird. It's the first time in the Bible where Jesus describes himself as a, as a mother hen. As a mother hen. And this used to really... Um, caused me to to wonder why he did this, you know. So I've taken time actually over the last year to really delve into this passage. And for me now, this passage really helps me deal with racism. It is one of the passages I go back to again and again and again, and it gives me guidance, it gives me inspiration, it gives me comfort um, when I'm I'm dealing with um, issues like racism in this world. Um... But it's interesting that Jesus describes himself as a mother hen. I mean, why didn't he say, you know, I am like the eagle, the the bold eagle, the fierce eagle. Uh, The eagle is such a powerful image that the United States actually has it as its national emblem. It's on the great seal. It's on the presidential flag. It's on all our dollar bills. Um, it is a very powerful image, and, and Jesus didn't use it. Um, it's found in the Bible 32 times. And in Exodus, it says, 19.4, it says, You yourself have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Um, it's a powerful image, and yet Jesus did not use this image at all. And... I also wonder why Jesus didn't use the image of a powerful leopard. You know, the leopard is such a powerful image in our society. And since this is Asian American Pacific Islander heritage, much I want I want to mention uh, in the Japanese culture, there is a god of wind called uh, Fujin, who wears a leopard uh, skin which causes the wind to be very ferocious. So the leopard, the leopard is found in the Bible um, eight times and is known, the leopard is known for its ferocious hunting um, techniques. And yet Jesus did not use the leopard as the image that he wanted to use. And lastly, I really am curious why Jesus didn't use the lion. We all know the lion is a powerful image in the Bible. It's found in the Bible 100 times times. The ancient Egyptians venerated the lions and and chose them to be deities because of their strength and their power and their fierceness. Um, The lion is is, um, a national symbol for for England, for the UK, but it's also the national symbol for Luxembourg, uh, North Macedonia, (laughs) Sri Lanka, uh, Singapore, Norway, and, and the Netherlands. And in Proverbs, it says, uh, Proverbs 30, 30 says, the lion is the mightiest among the beasts, does not turn back from any. So why didn't Jesus use the mighty lion as an image? And I think there's a, there's a powerful lesson to be learned in Jesus using this mother hen as his image. And I want to talk about how this beautiful, unexpected image of Jesus, of God, as a mother hen, has really helped me in in dealing with racism every day. So, four examples. First, um, you know, the the mother hen, I I wanted to study the mother hen, so I went to the internet and and I googled mother hen videos and I watched a bunch of videos on YouTube with uh, mother hens. And the beautiful thing that you'll see with the mother hen is that it, um, it will walk around the farmyard and the chicks will follow it. And when it's time to go to sleep, the mother hen um, 
will gather its brood under its wings. And it's a beautiful scene um, to, to gather, to, for the mother hen to gather its chicks under its wings. And one of the emotions that I saw, and I, I know you're not supposed to assign emotions to animals, but one of the emotions that I saw with this mother hen was that it loved its chicks. It really did. It was watching out for its chicks. It cared for its chicks. Um, it was the main emotion that I saw in this mother looking out for its chicks. And you could say this about all mothers and fathers, that it lo they love their, we love our children. We love our children, right? Now, how does this apply to racism? Now, I think that there are a lot of people that say that if we're gonna stamp out racism, if we're gonna get rid of structural and systemic racism, we need to use force, we need to use violence, we need to use our might. And while I think actually there is a place and a time for force and for fierceness to fight racism, I also think there's a place for love. And if we are going to stamp out racism, it really does have to happen at a personal level. It has to happen at one person at a time. And how do you change a person's uh, heart and mind and attitude about racism? How do you change one person's mind about and heart about uh, Asian people, about black people, about Latinx people? How do you do that? You do that by having a relationship with them, by being in relationship with them. Um, I think of I think of racism as a darkness, you know, that comes up from people's fears deep inside themselves that they didn't even know sometimes that they have. It's a darkness that dwells in us that is a coming from a place of fear. Now, while I don't think that, and I'm not so naive to think that love is a panacea, um, but I do think this image of a mother hen, a loving mother hen, um, just might be able to change the world. Dr. Martin Luther King said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Sorry. Darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. Only love can drive out hate. Now the second reason why I love this passage, this passage which Jesus uses the image of a mother hen, why I love it and use it often to uh, deal with racism is that, you know, while we want sometimes God to be fierce and powerful like a lion. Um, what, the chi what the mother hen does, as I said before, is it gathers its brood together and keeps the, the, the chicks safe and protected. Keeps them safe and protected. And I think we all want to be safe and protected, don't we? We all want to feel uh, like there is a safe place for us to go. Um, there's been a precipitous rise in Asian American violence since March 2020. It's documented, um, it's, it's well documented, and, and of course there's been really horrific videos of Asian Americans being attacked across the country. In most major cities, uh, the increase in violence against Asian Americans has been about 150%. But in New York alone, the rise in hatred and violence against Asian Americans is 833%. 833%. Now, one of the silver linings of um, this anti-Asian violence, this increase in anti-Asian violence, has been the solidarity that I have felt from my black and brown uh, communities, brothers and sisters, and other communities of color, and amongst the Asian American community. Remember, Asia is comprised of 48 different countries, something like 220-something different languages, so we're very, very different. 
But since the pandemic and since the rise of this anti-Asian violence, <clears throat> one of the silver linings has been this coalescing, this building of solidarity, this wanting to protect one another and to keep each other safe and protected from racism, from violence. Um, that's one of the silver linings. And this has been especially true when there was this rash of Asian American elderlies being attacked. I've, I got so many uh, different emails from people expressing their concern, expressing their outrage, and there was this, um, this, this really strong uh, mo mobilization of Asian Americans in, across the country because of this. Last week, I, I uh, received an email from an older couple that I've known in the church, and they had they wanted to write me because they wanted to comment on an ar article that I had written, but they also wanted to express their fear, their concern, their anxiety of going out uh, just to go shopping. And, um, you know, they, they talked about how they're almost paranoid to go out because of this increasing violence against Asian American elderly. And instantly when I read their email, and I read it a, a number of times, um, I instantly wanted to protect them. I wanted to keep them safe and protected. And I feel the same way about my parents. In Oakland Chinatown, there's a group that has um, come together that are um, escorting Asian elderly to go shopping in Oakland Chinatown because there's been some attacks there. These are complete strangers that are volunteering to escort uh, Asian American elderly because they wanna keep those elderly folks safe and protected. And I, I, I look back to this image of the mother hen that wants to keep her chicks safe and protected. And I think this is exactly what God wants us, how God wants us to, to walk through this world, to, to feel safe and protected. Now, the third reason why this scripture passage is, is useful to me in, in dealing with racism is that um, I see that what God, what Jesus wants to do is help us feel safe and protected, help us to feel like there's a, a shield against this evil called racism in this, in this world. And um, the image of the mother hen is that it gathers its, its brood together and it's a safe place. It's a safe place. When we deal with racism, especially as a person of color, because we deal with racism on a daily basis, it gets tiring. It gets... It wears us down, really. And we need to have a safe place to go. We need to have our brood, our community, our uh, family, our tribe to go back and feel safe and protected. Shortly after the pandemic started, um, I was uh, walking with some friends of mine past this Trader Joe's and there was a big long line there. And as I, I was third in line and as I walked by, all of us were wearing masks. This, this um, Caucasian woman drew back and just stared at me with, with what only could be described as hate and disgust and watched me as I walked by. Now, my other two friends who were white walked a, were walking ahead of me, walked past this woman and nothing happened. When she saw me, she drew back instantly with, with this look in her eyes. And it really, really disturbed me. It really made me upset. Um, and really, you know, although this wasn't violent, it left me wondering, well, you know, could something like this happen in the future that might be violent, that might be more confrontational? And so what I did was I went home shortly thereafter and I called and I emailed my tribe. I called and I reached out to people that I know I would feel safe and protected and, um, like my brood, you know, where I can decompress, where I can process, where I can be myself and say, hey, you know, this weird thing happened, uh, you know, not, not an hour ago. I want to talk to you about it. And um, I was able to do that and I was able to feel, uh, get some reality check. Um, now, interestingly enough, um, 
during this pandemic, not only have the black and brown community come together to support the Asian American community, but I've had a number of my white colleagues reach out to me and say, hey, John, I just want to check in how you're doing. Are you okay? You know, there's this increase in, in uh, anti-Asian violence. I want to know how I can help, how I can support you. And when, uh, when Caucasian folks have done that for me, have reached out to me, it is so heartwarming. I feel like my brood, my tribe has expanded to include this rich, diverse array of people, uh, black and brown and white allies. And that is so beautiful for me. Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month was proposed as a bill by Congressman Richard Horton back in the 70s. And the interesting thing about that was it was a staffer. It was Jeannie Jew who had the idea years before that and, and went to Richard Horton and said, hey, I got this idea for Asian, um, a, an Asian American month that we can celebrate. Uh, actually, at that time, it was a week. We could celebrate uh, and have pride in our Asian American culture. It was her idea, but it was Richard Horton who got the bill passed eventually. He was an ally to the Asian American community. And I think this passage reminds us that we, we have our brood and it could be expanded, you know, to include other people uh, and to, to grow this place where we feel safe and protected. Now, lastly, I love... I love that Jesus uses the image of the mother hen because it is so unexpected. It is so unexpected. We, we think that Jesus is going to say, hey, I am like the lion or the leopard or the bald eagle, mighty and fierce and on your side. But Jesus uses this image of a mother hen and it is so unexpected. And this has helped me so much because it reminds me that God shows up in our lives in unexpected ways, often in unexpected ways. When I was a kid, I used to believe that God was only to be found on Sunday morning for the hour in the sanctuary. And of course, I, I quickly grew out of that and have come to really experience and believe that God shows up in our lives in unexpected ways. About two, three months ago, at the height of uh, when these Asian Americans were being attacked, Asian American elderly were being attacked, I went for a walk with my dogs along the beach, and here's a, here's, a, here's a picture of it. And I have to tell you, I was disturbed. I was really torn up inside. I was really upset. And on that walk, I remember thinking, just churning, you know, my mind was churning, fear, anger, fear, anger. What can I do? How can I help? Um, are my parents going to be safe? All these things are going on. And um, I know I was walking around probably with my brow furled like this. And all of a sudden, in the middle of my churning, of my anxiety, of my fear, of my, ang my anger, I looked up and I saw this, this beautiful sunset happening right before my eyes. And at that moment, I stopped and I looked at it and I said, wow, that is beautiful. Now, this is how God shows up in our lives often in unexpected ways, just to tap us on the shoulder to say, hey, you know what? I know you're going through those health issues. I know you're going through those financial issues, those relationship challenges. But you know what? It's going to be okay. It's going to be all right, John. My prayer for you all is that God will show up in your lives, and perhaps in unexpected ways, and tap you on the shoulder and to let you know that, hey, it's going to be okay. It may not look great right now. It may look scary. It may look dark. It may look upsetting, but it's going to be all right. Just have faith and hold on. Blessings and peace, and it's such a, a wonderful honor to be able to be with you to celebrate Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Amen.
from Hawaii, the Pulekako. Let us pray. E o mai ike mai luna mai e o na me a una no e a uno na me le o mai e o mai e o mai e E o mai ka ike mai luna mai e O nā mea huna no e au O nā mele E o mai E o mai E o mai e Grant us the knowledge from above Considering the hidden wisdom of songs, of chants, of story Grant us, grant us, grant to us these things. O eternal God, creator, sustain of all beauty of all life, we gather as your people. We gather as Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders to give you our hearts, praise and thanksgiving for your presence always in our lives, in the midst of all circumstances and situations, your, your presence is constant, and we offer you our heart's gratitude, our grateful mahalo nui loa. O God of love, we pray your presence that is sanctuary and security. And we pray that the church be that sanctuary, a place of inclusion, a place of welcome, a place of safety, a place of acceptance, a place of compassion. O Le Tangaloa, the God of endless freedom, free us, free us from enslavement to this COVID-19 pandemic. Free us and put an end to racism and violence against Asian American and Pacific Islanders and all people of color. Set us free, O oh God. Set us free to sing and to proclaim and to rejoice. O oh God of creation, we pray that you will speak your word of life once again your song, your chant, your story, so that we may sing and proclaim anew your song of this joy and hope of life, of justice and peace, this abundance and buoyancy of your grace that keeps us steady and courageous and grounded in the midst of all the chaos that we experience and face. O creator of life, Speak again your word 
in the midst of this chaos so that we may be free. Anoa i ka kou maka inoa ka makua, a me ke keiki, a me ka uhane, i mulele. In the name of the Creator, Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we are grateful for this opportunity to celebrate Asian Heritage Month. We know that your will is to allow us to live in harmony and love with each other and with all humanity. Forgive us for not obeying your will, hurting one another, and living in fear of one another. Help us to build the kingdom of God by showing our love and hospitality to each other even if we are from different cultures, races, and social economic conditions. No racism for any siblings, tribes, and colors, and let your equity, mercy, and justice prevail in our world. Although we are weak, continue to strengthen us to practice your love that builds each other up. May the love of God, justice of Jesus Christ, and restoring power of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen.